All right, Estelle turns one today. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday today. Drew Brees turns 41 today. The Saints quarterback as uh, the Saints season ended in the wild card round. But on Monday night, more football in the Superdome as the South Louisiana team was able to win a championship there. It was the fourth for the LSU Tigers. And the guest captain that night was former All-American North Louisiana native Tampa Bay Buccaneer first round pick, Super Bowl winner twice in the NFL, and now part of the Monday Night Football crew. Booger McFarlane, he's here with us every Wednesday on OTB, brought to you by Central Plumbing Company. Booger, good morning, man. How was Monday night for you? Man, Monday night was fantastic. I, I, I felt exhausted when the game was over. Yeah. I was uh, emotionally invested, and but I, you know, I, I did feel some kind of way, Jordy. Let me tell you this. So I'm, I'm on the field. And, you know, the, the Tigers win and everybody's celebrating. And literally six inches from me stood T-Bob. And I, I just waited to see if he was going to even say hello or speak. Whoa, or whoa, whoa, or whoa, 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 whoa. Hold that on is... one second. Hold on. Hold on one second. And I'm like, okay, is, is T-Bob even going to acknowledge my presence? Wow. And T-Bob just looked the other way. And I, I, I really felt disappointed. I, I thought you and I had a connection, big, big guy. Look, okay, uh, two things. First off, you never gave me the shout-out on Monday Night Football. Um, secondly, I did not see you. If I had seen you, I would have absolutely come and given you a big bear hug. I feel like you brought a lot of good luck to the coin toss. You actually set LSU up for the back-to-back. They didn't follow through. They, you know, they, they got stopped over that second half, but I was very pleased from afar. I feel like you brought good luck to the entire coin toss. So, I apologize, Boog. I uh, I would have <laughs> given you a big suit. one. He did. Great the suit. You held it down. Uh, for one the squad. NFL question before we get to the the game because I want to talk a lot about uh, your just a recap all season for LSU. Breeze turns forty one today. What's the future look like for him? Um, I mean, if he still wants to play, I'm sure the Saints will have him back. My gut feeling, and this is based off no inside knowledge. My gut feeling says Drew Breeze is done. Wow. And I I, I think that when you when you look at where he is. In his career, all he's accomplished, and and I think at some point in every player's life, especially the greats, you devote so much time to football and you put so much energy and effort into it. He's got young little kids, and there's only 24 hours in a day, and you got to get sleep and all that stuff. And so he's taken a lot of time away from being a dad seven months a year to devote to football. And at some point, you ask yourself, Am I a Hall of Famer? Check. Do I own records? Check. Have I won a Super Bowl? Check. Do I have more money than, than my kids could ever spend? Check. Then why am I still playing? Yes, you love the game, but we all know you love your family and your kids more. And I think Drew Brees is kind of at that time where he could still play. But I think, you know, and, and, and I know it was that way for me also and some of the other ones. At, at some point, you got to balance, okay, I want to give those seven months a year where I'm really only getting home at seven at night and tucking my kids in and saying good night. I want to get all that time back and try to make an imprint and, and make an impression on my young family. So my gut feeling says he's done. Whoa. And if he is, I think, the, I, I think the Saints will have a battle between, um, you know, Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill to see who's going to be the starting quarterback. Again, that's just my gut feeling with no intel from anyone. You know, Boog, if I did ignore you, that technically means that I big-dogged the Monday Night Football guy, which is pretty big for me. Uh, that makes me uh, pretty badass. So thank you for allowing me to use you as that stepping stone. Um, let's talk about the national championship, though. Uh, were you surprised with just how handily LSU ended up winning that game by the end? Um. Yes, and here's why. I, I, I think no one was surprised that LSU scored 42 points. I don't think anybody in the country is surprised. I think the biggest surprise is the fact that other than uh, a couple of drives that were penalty kind of latent, I mean, LSU's defense balled out all night. Yeah. And I, I think that was, to me, the biggest surprise. Uh, Stingley, even though Fulton gave up a couple plays, I thought our corners were outstanding. I thought Queen was dominant. And the defensive line controlled the interior. Now, Etienne got some yards in the screen game and a couple yards on, on some outside runs. But I thought overall – what Dave Aranda did, Corey Raymond, and all those guys did on defense, to me, the transformation going from the old Miss game where everybody in Baton Rouge is texting me, man, what's going on with our defense? And I'm like, yeah. you know, it, it's different. And to, to go from that to against an offense, let's face it, 
T. Higgins, he'll be a first round pick. Ross will be a first round pick. Uh, Lawrence will be the number one pick. Etienne is going to play in the NFL. So the, you're looking at an offense that their skill guys are all going to play in the NFL. And LSU pretty much, I'm not going to say they dominated, but they controlled a large part of that game on defense. Yeah, why? What was I think one for eleven on third down? You know, when when you gotta have it, the LSU defense was uh, spectacular, and then perhaps so, but nobody is more spectacular than Joey Burrow. Like I, I don't know what to say at this point. In the playoffs alone, fourteen touchdowns, one hundred and five points, sixty touchdowns on the year through the air, sixty five total. How like what? What's your like just football guy reaction to these numbers? You know the numbers are what they are, and I think they speak for themselves. I, I think you know the offense is is outstanding. Joe Burrow is dynamite. You know the cool part about Joe Burrow for me is his demeanor. Like I stood next to him, and and, and this is this is the, one of the coolest moments I have. You know, here's the Heisman Trophy winner, and and we're standing there, and I'm and. I literally have no idea where I'm supposed to go for this coin toss. The guy's like, hey, just hang out here. And then the referee says, hey, come stand here. So I'm just walking. All of a sudden, I'm standing next to Joe. And, and I look at him. And I'm like, he doesn't say a word. This kind of gives me a look. And, and I just tell him, hey, man, enjoy the moment. Look around. Soak it in. Um, you'll remember this the rest of your life, regardless of what happens tonight. And, like, the look on his face and, and, and the coolness and the calmness, to me, when you get in pressure situations, very few guys can slow their heart beat down. Mm. He does that. And I can tell that by standing next to him and talking to him. And so for me, the cool part was able to kind of be out there at the coin toss and to share some words um, with him and, and, and for him out to converse and then to go watch him play the way he played. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I can add on to what anybody, uh, what everybody else has already said. Like it, it's a magical season. His transformation from you from year one at LSU to year two has been outstanding, and I think you got to give a, a a lot of credit to Coach O and and Brady and Insminger, and and I've been saying this to everybody, guys, and and T Bob, you know, you, you should feel like this from Jordy because Jordy believed in you <laughs> when probably nobody else in the world believed that you could do radio. So it's actually you know, not far off from the truth. Like when yet. I first got out of college, it was Derek Panamski and Jordy who gave me the opportunity. So. Uh, right. Pretty astute there, Bug. Well, it, it, it's one of those things, man, where when somebody believes in you, it's amazing the confidence that you get to be able to grow things without worrying about like all of the things that come with it. And I think Joe Joe Burrow is a classic that in T Bob, I, I, I a much lesser extent, you are an example of that also. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, I'll take it, dude. That technically puts me in the same sentence with Burrow. So I mean, I like you. We are the company we keep. I'll take it. If, if that's how you're going to look at that, maybe I need to rephrase it. <laughs> look, how does uh, how does Brady transition? Joe Brady transition to the NFL from your point of view? Uh, fine from an NFL standpoint, guys. I, I think when you look at him. Um, the offense is really legit. Um, I mean, he's, he's always wanted to be an NFL guy. And I think everyone in Baton Rouge kind of already knew that at some point he was going to the NFL. I think we were hoping to get maybe one more year out of him, but we didn't. Um, it's all going to depend on the quarterback. I mean, this offense was based around Joe Burrow and a, a running back that can run and catch. Well, guess what? They have that in Christian McCaffrey. Who's going to be the quarterback in Carolina? Can Cam Newton be as accurate as Joe, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Burrow? I don't think so. Uh, does he have to? I don't know if he has to. Maybe maybe the Joe Brady Carolina offense is going to be more run-oriented with Cam Newton. I don't know. But one thing I know is I'm not going to doubt Joe Brady with what he did and how he changed the fortune and the perception of LSU football over the last yeah. uh, year. Two teams. That's all I got time for. Who's playing in the Super Bowl? Kansas City and San Francisco. Ooh. Oh, Nice. We'll ask you for the winner next week. Like there a he is. classic NFL that matchup good, right that is, there. That's a good one. Booger McFarlane every week here on OTB by Central Plumbing Company. Thank you, man. Have a good weekend. Anytime. T-Bob, take it easy, buddy, and shave at some point. Our football season's almost over. We are. It's fine. The, the, the cut is coming. I'll, I'll tweet you when it's done, Bug. Uh, and again, sorry. I would have no, loved to hug you. I don't need to he doesn't care that much. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know he was Later. devastated, so I just want him to know that I'm really sorry. Close that out. What next?